All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're going to be diving into a really important discussion because we're gonna be talking about tail scale versus open VPN. Which one should you be using for your use case? Both of them provide an incredibly secure way of accessing your NAS completely remotely from anywhere in the world without worrying about the security implications of it because both of these are ironclad secure protocols. If you're using a Synology as an office file server, these are great ways of having your remote employees be able to access files wherever they are. Now, this is going to be mostly focusing on Synology NAS because unfortunately, my other favorite NAS brand, TrueNAS, axed OpenVPN compatibility. So now, the only option on there is to self-host something with Docker, and for that, TailScale is just a no-brainer for that. Or you can always use your router. But today, we're gonna to be talking about NAS packages that are set up, deployed right on the NAS, and really a Synology NAS. And by the way, if you like these tutorials, subscribe. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers, so really appreciate it. And also, put any other tutorials you like to see me make down in the comments below. Before we get into the pro and con list, Let's talk about the use case for this. And I'll go ahead and leave a really good video that I've already made that kind of goes over why you do this and the different ways to remote access files. But both of these protocols are used to essentially be able to access the NAS just like you do at home or at the office. And when I'm saying that these are VPN services, don't think of them like NordVPN. That's going to allow you to torrent and hide from your ISP or anything like that, or watch Netflix in another country. Instead, these are the original intent of the VPN server. VPNs were initially designed to securely connect two networks together or a network and a device. So the whole point of a VPN back in the day was so that you could easily access a local web server that you don't want opened up to the internet, but not have to be in the local business network. And that's exactly what these do. So if you want a very secure network setup, you don't want your local internet site, your time card site, or your file server, or anything else to be publicly accessible at all. It's way easier just to have zero public access to those than have to worry about all the security implications of having that stuff be publicly accessible. And so instead of opening up all of these services to the internet where anybody can try to log in, you instead lock them down entirely so only people on the local network can connect. Then for remote employees, or just you when you're outside your house, you connect through a VPN server to basically tunnel back into your network and talk to all your devices. And so for me, I do this all the time. When I'm on the road, I just log into my VPN client that VPNs me right back into my office network, and now I can access all my virtual machines, all my monitoring tools, everything, as if I was sitting in the office. And that way, all of those tools are blocked from any internet access, but when I'm local, I'm there. And so that's why you do both these things. I'll leave a link down in the description below to that video that really goes over the implementation of all of these. Really, this is the pro and con list, so watch that video first. All right, so now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the pros and the cons of using OpenVPN or TailScale. And I use them both in a lot of cases, and they have a lot of great strengths and a lot of large weaknesses, which can make it very easy to decide in a lot of cases. So first, I'm gonna go through and talk about the pros and cons of each, and then I'm gonna talk about all the different use cases where one is far superior than the other. And so first off, both of these packages are just installed directly on Synology NAS. If you're wanting to look at OpenVPN, you just install a VPN server, and TailScale, you install TailScale. Now, they do differ pretty significantly by how they are implemented and requirements on third-party services. OpenVPN is entirely self-hosted. So if any company in the world shuts down, other than your internet service provider, OpenVPN will still continue to work. And that even includes Synology shutting down. If Synology shut down tomorrow, you'd still be able to use VPN server. You'd probably still be able to use TailScale. You just couldn't update either one of those packages. But for example, TailScale, it's a public company. So if they shut down, you're not going to be able to use it. Now, technically there is a way to self-host a version of TailScale. We're not gonna be talking about that here because that is an entirely different case. We're gonna be talking about the standard TailScale deployment. So whereas OpenVPN does not require anything on any third-party companies, it is all just client directly talking to your Synology NAS, TailScale does. 
So Tailscale is actually a company who provides a very nice interface for WireGuard. WireGuard is actually a VPN protocol, pretty much exactly how OpenVPN works. And Tailscale is just a layer on top of that that allows you to really easily set up WireGuard connections device to device. And so while they are very similar in the fact that they're both VPN protocols that allow you to remotely access pretty much any network in the world, as long as you can do a few things we'll talk about later, they are also very different in the requirements on third party softwares and third party servers. So Tailscale, when it can, it does do direct connections. And in that case, it's actually very similar to Quick Connect. Quick Connect does the exact same thing. You can only use Quick Connect if Synology servers are online. If Synology servers go offline, Quick Connect goes offline. But whenever Quick Connect can, it actually uses a direct connection to your Synology. And so once that in connection has been initiated, it is direct to client. Tail scale works the exact same way. So whenever you initiate a tail scale network configuration, it reaches out to the tail net and then it goes, hey, I can access this here, handles all of the key exchanges and all the requirements of making sure that the person is actually authorized to use that service. And that's actually all done by Tailscale Inc. Then after that, if it can, it'll directly negotiate that connection, not having the overhead. And so that is the big difference between OpenVPN and Tailscale. Tailscale is essentially a VPN as a service, whereas OpenVPN is just a protocol that is implemented directly in DSM and does not require any third party services. And so that is the basics of these two softwares. So when setting them on and Synology NAS, both of them are very easy to set up to do OpenVPN. And I've got tutorials on these. You just open up a VPN server, enable OpenVPN, follow a few steps and open up the port on your router and boom, you download the client to your computer and the certificate and now you're authenticated. Tailscale is actually easier in a lot of ways because it does not require any ports to be open on your, on your router, at least just to work. And instead, it's all handled by going and authenticating with tailscale.com. So just like this, we click on it. It's going to ask us to go ahead and re-authenticate. And now we're going to go ahead and sign in with our account. And so just like this, we are hooked up to the Tailscale network and all connected on in. And now if I download Tailscale to my computer, sign in with the same account, boom, I can actually just connect to that stuff really easily, handling everything for us. And so that is the gist of these two setups. They're both very easy to set up, but Tailscale is definitely the easier option to set up. So when we're talking about a pro and con list, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. And probably the most important for all of these is speed. So it's great to have remote access, but if it's slow, it's kind of useless, especially if you're trying to use this as a file server and copy large documents around. Employees are not going to have a good time if they can't even open a PDF in a few seconds. And this is actually where it's almost tail scales winning and losing depending on how it's configured. And this all comes down to something I touched on earlier is that Tailscale, much like Quick Connect, can either use a relay server or a direct connection. So Tailscale using a relay server, as in a port is not open and it can't negotiate the proper protocol, will be very slow. It'll be similar to Quick Connect speeds because you are operating on somebody else's connection and they're having to maintain those servers. So if you cannot get a direct connection with Tailscale, it is not going to be very fast. It's going to be usable for accessing a local website, but you're not gonna be really copying files. However, if you are able to negotiate that direct connection, it is going to be far faster than OpenVPN, though both of them in most cases will be limited to the upload speed of your office network because obviously they can't send you more data than the inner line allows. So, OpenVPN is the basic OpenVPN protocol, and the only way to set it up is with that direct port open. Now, Tailscale uses WireGuard, as I said earlier, and WireGuard is a fundamentally faster protocol than OpenVPN. WireGuard was designed by a mathematician as his PhD study, if I remember correctly, to show what's the fastest way to have a secure remote connection, and it blows everything else out of the water. 
And so when you do get that direct connection through Tailscale, it is going to be faster than hooking up via VPN connection with OpenVPN. And another key advantage that Tailscale has over OpenVPN is Tailscale is what's called a mesh VPN. And this is huge if you've got multiple sites. So traditionally, whenever you had a VPN connection and multiple offices, you would use what's called a hub and spoke method. Essentially, all the offices would be connected to one centralized server, one centralized site that has the fast internet connection, and everything will be routed through there. And so Tailscale does have this great diagram that really shows you this. So this is exactly how traditional VPN setups work with large offices. You have all of your clients connecting to one massive hub, and then it's set off to the different servers. And these can sometimes be, as we see here, across the country. And so even if something's connecting to a server not that far away from it, it has to bog down the network and go all the way across the country and have a bunch of problems like that. And so this is actually the initial solution that Tailscale was trying to beat. And so instead of being a traditional hub and spoke method that OpenVPN operates on generally, instead Tailscale is a mesh, a device to device VPN. So every single device on the Tailscale network, they don't go through a centralized relay server in most cases. Instead, they go through direct connections. They talk directly to the client and that speeds up the connections by a large amount. So this actually uses some of the great power of WireGuard where WireGuard can essentially have nearly infinite connections to it without overhead. And so we can go ahead and build all these tunnels where devices can talk to each other directly without having to be routed through these very large hub and spokes. Now, that being said, if you are like most people and just have one site, this does not really matter too much to you. But if you're somebody who has multiple sites and clients need to access all these different devices, it is going to be far faster to have something like Tailscale running. And Unify has the same thing with Unify ID. But you want to make these setups where the clients can directly talk to the servers or at least the server sites without having to go through a single VPN hub. So that is another one of those cases where Tailscale is going to be faster than OpenVPN. So hands down across the board, Tailscale is going to win as long as you open up the port for Tailscale and get that direct connection. Now that being said, with basic use with a NAS, I've not found a massive performance difference in most cases if you've got a fast CPU in both the client and the NAS. I really have found that OpenVPN is fast enough to saturate most of those connections, but Tailscale does have that edge, especially when you are operating across multiple sites. So next up in our list of the pros and cons is going to be authentication. And they authenticate entirely separately. And from my experience, I actually like the way that OpenVPN authenticates due to the fact that it is integrated within DSM. So Tailscale, as I said earlier, is a VPN as a service. And that is a separate service than the NAS that you've configured locally. So with Tailscale, you actually have to give everybody in your office a Tailscale account, or actually just use single sign-on or something like that, and then access via that. So they are not able to authenticate directly from DSM. Instead, they have to authenticate via Tailscale. And so that is an extra overhead to it and makes it a lot harder, especially when you just want people to be able to have it work. OpenVPN is directly within DSM. So giving people access to OpenVPN is as easy as just checking who has access and which Synology accounts have access to the VPN server. And so I think this is far, far, far easier once you're talking about a office or multiple users. If it's just you, who cares? You can set it up and it doesn't really matter. But once you start having to have other people start operating on this, OpenVPN is a lot easier to manage authentication wise because you're already going to be authenticating them to the NAS in most cases. And now we need to roll into the next part that is beautifully tied to this is going to be cost. So while Tailscale has a brilliant free tier that most of the people watching this video will actually just be in and never have to pay a dime to them, they also charge. So Tailscale, it's a publicly traded company. It is not just doing all these things from the goodness of their heart. So 
once you go out of the free tier, which is three users, you start having to go and pay $6 per user per month. And that is where it gets expensive. And you can even go up to a very expensive $18 per user per month plan. And so while Tailscale is awesome and has a brilliant free tier, especially if you're going to start having a lot of employees, this can become pretty expensive pretty quickly. And that's why Tailscale is free. Tailscale is really trying to get all the home lavers and all the home users to know it, know it well. And so they know that these people are going to take those skills to their offices and they're going to say, hey, we've got all these different servers around the country. Everybody's having trouble authenticating into them. How Tailscale can solve this? And I've done that for clients. And Tailscale has solved massive problems and been worth every penny to this. But when it comes to cost, as soon as you step out of that free tier, it is going to be a lot more expensive than OpenVPN is because OpenVPN is free. And so when it comes to cost, OpenVPN pretty clearly wins. All right, so our next pro and con for these is going to be one that's really hard to give a win or two because they're very, very, very different. And that is security. And so before I get into this, both of these protocols are going to be incredibly secure. These are leagues better than opening up a port or using Quick Connect or anything like that because they are both layering security. So not only does this entire security protocol have to fail, you still have your other authentication levels, which means it's not just a free lunch. Both of these are really just layers on top of security, which makes them so secure in them of themselves. And they're also both designed to be ultra secure beyond that. OpenVPN, WireGuard are the fundamental protocols we're talking about here. And both of them are incredibly secure. We're talking about security in terms of people being able to breach them or sniff packets from them. And reasonably, both of these are incredibly strong and you're not going to have a risk in either case, honestly. OpenVPN uses TLS-based authentication as well as, in this case, username password-based authentication. And so it makes it very easy to add and remove accounts from being able to access the NAS. All you do is you revoke somebody's access on the NAS. Now they can't log in either. Very easy to do there. And so when it comes to Tailscale, it is using WireGuard and authentication off of that. And they have tons of white papers telling you about how secure their protocol is. And I believe them. They are poised to really make money in terms of gaining trust by large publicly traded companies who want to use them for their employees. That is Tailscale's goal in all of this. And so now while Tailscale does introduce an entirely new avenue, an entirely th new threat surface, which is basically all of Tailscale, it is also not Synology. So there is the advantage there where even though you're introducing something different, you're now layering it. So with Synology, say somebody found out that Synology had a massive backdoor in it that was designed there on purpose for the longest time. Well, that backdoor could exist in both OpenVPN and on DSM. Now, we would expect it to be seen pretty easily due to the fact that Synology is open source. You can request the source code and literally read all the code that's on there. And OpenVPN is a very secure protocol and it's very standardized but that is theoretically possible. Now, if this case occurred with Tailscale, you are secure because even if your Synology behind the scenes is incredibly insecure, it does not have any access because Tailscale has locked out all the access. And say Tailscale breaches, well, now you still have all the authentication on your local network. I'm gonna give these two a tie because while Tailscale does introduce more security threat surfaces, by adding an entirely separate authentication method. It also has the advantage of being a security service that is not tied to your primary local network, which is probably the NAS. So there are going to be pros and cons with each of those. But one thing that does have a clear cut answer is our next one, which is going to be privacy. Hands down, OpenVPN is going to win this because we're talking about OpenVPN getting back to your network. We're not talking about OpenVPN torrenting online. When you set up OpenVPN server on a Synology NAS, you're end to end your own system, your own authentication that only you can do. Nothing is flowing through any other services other than exactly what you've got. There's no way that anybody can see any traffic through that OpenVPN tunnel because you created it, you've got the keys, everything is yours. When it comes to Tailscale, 
they're always going to have more access than OpenVPN would because you are flowing through another company's servers. You are handling authentication through another company. You are handling all these things and these logs are existing on another company's servers, which is totally fine. And we're not gonna have any chance of the actual data leaking out because of the way that Tailscale operates. WireGuard ensures that Tailscale doesn't know what traffic's being sent back and forth, but Tailscale will know what ports and services you're using because they are logging them and they're actually showing those logs to you. Whereas that is just not possible with OpenVPN because it's OpenVPN. It is just a strict protocol that you are using to connect to your NAS. So that one definitely wins with OpenVPN. And let's talk about compatibility. And it's going to be essentially tied here. Pretty much all devices across the board can operate either OpenVPN or Tailscale. Tailscale has done a phenomenal job of being available on as many devices as possible. And I never run into a case where I'm trying to install on something that doesn't allow it. Same thing with OpenVPN. They both essentially are ubiquitous in terms of what is capable. All right, so now we're gonna have one more pro and con here before we go into the use cases I use them for, and that is ease of use. Between the two, I find it hard to really give one of these a winner because they both have advantages in their own right. If you're a single user, setting up Tailscale is far easier than setting up OpenVPN because you just boom, done. You don't have to worry about ports. You can add them later if you want to, but everything is just knocked out for you and it's all very easy. You can connect all your devices quick and easy. You don't have to worry about these certificate files. Everything's handled for you. And so when you're a single user, Tailscale is much easier. But if you're a business with employees, now you've got to make sure people understand that you're using Tailscale and they've got a separate account for that. And it really expands out the difficulty. And so in a sense, they kind of tie in that case because for single users, Tailscale is so easy to spin up and deploy. But once you've got a lot of people who are already accessing the NAS, it's much easier just to use an open VPN protocol with that. All right. So that was my big old pro and con list. You can tally those up, but realistically, there's no way of just crowning one of them a winner because they have such strong pros and cons for different use cases. There's no sense in crowning one of them king because the pros and cons, as you heard, are all so use case specific. And so we're gonna talk about the different use cases I use and why I love Tailscale and why I love OpenVPN and why I end up deploying them on the same NAS a lot of times. One of my favorite use cases for Tailscale, especially in a business environment, is device to device backup. So one thing you just cannot do well when you're ever you're setting up OpenVPN is Synologies don't do a great job of connecting to another OpenVPN server and holding the same IP address. From my experience, using a backup over an open VPN connection from a Synology to a Synology where one's a server, one's a client, does not work well. Long story short, the IP address changes often and your backup fails and you have to change the IP address. It's really annoying. What Tailscale does is Tailscale makes this incredibly easy and keeps it in the free tier all the time. So whenever you're using Tailscale, essentially all you do is you assign them both a Tailscale IP address, or just hook them up to your Tailnet, and boom, once you run the script that you're required to at boot, it makes it really, really easy to use snapshot replication device advice, use hyper backup device advice, and it doesn't matter where on the internet you put these devices, as long as they've got internet access, they will find each other and be able to talk. So my favorite use case for Tailscale by far is going to be hooking up backup unit for a Synology, where you can have a secure encrypted remote offsite backup. And I actually have done a write up on exactly how I set that up. So I'll leave a link down in the description below to how I do that. It's on my forms and I deploy it probably four times a week with clients. It's that useful. The next use case that I really use all the time for OpenVPN is, is the Office VPN. As I said earlier, OpenVPN is a paid service. And while they've got the brilliant free tier for home users essentially, or one or two people, it gets expensive quick whenever you're hooking up an office network and having office authentication where all you have to do is create an account for them on the NAS. And now they've also got access to the OpenVPN server is a no brainer. And so for me, 
If I'm ever setting up an office VPN environment, I'm always using OpenVPN unless I can't. And that brings us to our next case is, Tailscale fundamentally can do stuff that OpenVPN cannot because Tailscale can use relay servers. And so in those cases where there's an office without a public IP address, and so without a public IP address, you can't do port forwarding, Tailscale uses these relay servers that allow you to do it. It makes it so much easier, and that's a case where I will always go Tailscale because OpenVPN is just not an option. Finally, home users who just want really quick and easy access to their NAS, or even small businesses with one or two people who just, they need to be able to plug something in on their phone and no matter what network they're on and no matter what their network configuration, have it work, that's where Tailscale wins out. Whew. Okay. I know this was a long video, but there's so many pros and cons to these services that both of them are the right answer and both of them are the wrong answer in so many cases. If you have any other questions, leave those down in the comments below. And if you'd like to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.